Ulna is an agility-based warrior class hero from the Celestial Faction who specializes in buffing her allies and debuffing her enemies. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at her skills and abilities, her teams and uses, and whether or not it's worth investing in this hero. So let's get into it. For her ultimate ability, Winter Warcry, it first has a passive that states all characters on the battlefield have their haste reduced by 40 points, and this includes her allies. Now, when you activate this ability, she'll call down a blizzard that's going to deal AOE damage to the enemies on the battlefield. And this will also double the effects of any haste reduction effects on those enemies and nullify any haste buffs that they receive during this time. Next up, we have Freezing Pierce. Ulna is going to attack a select enemy, deal damage based on their max HP, which is going to be increased based on how much haste they have lost. For Winter's Call, Ulna is going to make herself immune to control effects and damage for up to 9 seconds and also reduce nearby enemies dodge ratings. And then for Frozen Fury, Ulna is going to use her spear to swipe at nearby enemies, dealing damage and reducing their haste. Now each time she does use this ability, she will grant an extra attack on it up to a maximum of 3 and the haste reduction can stack. For her signature ability, Unrelenting Heart, Ulna is going to recover health based on how much damage she has taken throughout the battle. And at level 30, when Ulna's health drops below 50% for the first time in combat, she will instantly trigger Winter's Call, giving herself that immunity to damage and control effects. And finally we have her Furniture ability, at level 3, when she she's placed on the front line, the damage dealt by the other frontline ally is going to reduce the enemy target's haste. And at level 9, when Ulna is placed on the front row, the other front row ally will also receive the effects of Winter's Call, giving them an immunity to damage and control effects. Ulna becomes a very important part of many teams in the end game. She can enable a lot of teams to work due to the way her nine furniture grants the ally on the front row invincibility and immunity for nine seconds. This gives teams a lot of time to ramp up, especially at high deficits when incoming damage is normally relatively high. It gives you some free time to let your team's plan run out and claim the victory. Due to this amazing ability, Ulna can work really well with a range of heroes things like Damon, Lucretia, Isold, and really just about any carry damage dealer that you want to use. She can protect them at the start of the battle and let them work. But the main team that we're going to focus in on is her working with Grizzle. Now, the reason this synergy is so strong is that Grizzle takes some time to ramp up. He wants to summon as many of his skeleton minions as he can, put shields on them, and then they can distract the enemy team from actually attacking his team. Ulna provides the perfect protection at the start of the battle, giving him that nice seconds of invincibility for him to start rolling out his troops to be able to flood the battlefield. Then for the back row in this team, it's just about piecing together a team with some sustain, some control, or some extra damage. It doesn't really matter. The core of Ulna and Grizzul is so strong in itself, you can make it work with just about anything depending on the situation and what the enemy team has. So for this example, we're going to go with a balanced team in the back row, bringing some extra damage, some healing, and some control. With damage, Damon, Silas, and Pharrell. And as we stated, the way this team is going to work is that Ulna is going to protect Grizzul at the start of the battle, allow him to start summoning his minions. Then we have Silas in the back row who's going to provide the healing for the team. Also with his ultimate ability, he can inject an ally, giving them invincibility as well, so he can protect anyone that is getting low with that ability. Then we have Pharrell in there who's going to be fearing the enemies, also having a lot of debuffs with his spirits, so he will be reducing the healing they receive, allowing the team to work through the enemy faster. Then in this one, we also have Damon, who's going to be in the back row, protected by Ulna and Grizzul, being able to use his ultimate and deal that massive scaling HP damage to the enemies to help wear them down. As for artifacts for Ulna, something like the Chaos Bringer or Carnage are both very strong. However, you can also get away with something like Jura's Eye. And now that we understand the true value that Ulna brings to her team, we look at how far do we want to invest into her. 
And the answer is that you have to invest incredibly far. To be able to protect her ally on the front row with that amazing invincibility for nine seconds, we are gonna have to get Olna to nine furniture. So nine furniture is gonna be a staple requirement for Olna to make her work, meaning you are gonna have to get her ascended to have this capability. And as for the signature item, level 30 is where you wanna to get to. Being able to have that extra invincibility buff when she drops below 50% is very crucial in some fights. And being that Olna is a celestial hero, we have to consider whether we would want to stargaze for her. And the thing is, she is simply one of the greatest heroes in the game currently, up there with Lucretia. So depending on how you enjoy playing the game, Olna and Lucretia are both up there in the top spots. So feel free to make her your first celestial or hypogene that you do stargaze for once you start getting those cards. So that is gonna be it for Olna. An amazing hero in AFK Arena, supporting her team so strongly with that invincibility for the front row ally, but also debuffing her enemies with that haste decrease that scales so well. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day and we'll look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.